I would not want to take a hand, fucking uppercut from you, dude. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'll be gentle, man. Yeah, please, please, <laughs> please, Keith, please. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. Basically, Jamie's going to throw up a quick intro and then we're going to absolutely hammer the fuck out of you with questions. No worries. I'll silence this piece of shit in case I haven't already. <laughs> 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 Fucking phone. Just too popular, man. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody bothers me until I got shit to do. Why is that always the way? <laughs> you know? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> just sat there doing fuck all day like oh cool right, it's, oh I've got this shit to go and do ah, ah everybody, I need this I need this I want this I, are, are you alive what's going on <laughs> it, it's the most irrelevant shit too you know? <laughs> it's never anything important though. nothing literally nothing like, have you got oranges Keith uh, fuck off <laughs> you know like why have you got oranges why did your brain go there I don't know it's just the first thing I thought of you know, somebody texts me about produce when I'm trying to do shit. I'm punching <laughs> my throat, dude. <laughs> oh, Jamie. Oh, amazing. Yeah, I'll do my little intro, shall I? Uh, ladies and gents, here on Chronicles, we like to talk to people to hear their story and the tales of their lives. Well, today's guest has a story of many ups and many downs, but no doubt these have made him the wonderful, amazing person that he is today. Here to talk all about MMA, acting, documentary making, podcasting, the whole lot, the genius behind Tatnus Co., Mr. Keith McCleary. God damn, I don't know how I'm going to look to all that now. Oh, I, love, I, love, I love getting those reactions from my interview. Interest. <laughs> we like to lose your false security, Keith. That's what it is. Pretty you know, like, that, that, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> we'll get his guard down and then we'll fucking <laughs> hammer it. But, um, Keith, man, how, how was your 2020, dude? Uh, you know, I can't complain. I know it's been shit for everybody else. But for me, dude, like, I have no complaints. If I was to complain, people would be like, what a dick. <laughs> because you know everything's been good for me man like you know I'm not trying to shit on you know anybody that had it rough but for me you know everything just kind of turned out better than any other fucking year so um so I mean I, I you know fucking got into movies and shit like that and uh just expanded my company and things like that like I've got nothing to bitch about so that's so yeah. good dude I mean, yeah, the COVID thing sucks, but it, you know, it only affected me when they closed the fucking gyms. That's when I got pissed off because I'm like, <laughs> social anyway. I don't really fuck with anybody. <laughs> no. I'm like, I'm, okay. I haven't kind of had a full on lockdown for like it's about a year now. Uh, where I'm at, not so much because um, it, it's been more chill here. People were kind of like doing what they should do. And we didn't have it so bad here. Whereas where I come from in Toronto, uh, that area, fuck, dude, it, it's still a clusterfuck. They're back on like their fourth lockdown or some shit. They're getting like 900 cases a day that were new. And out here, we're on none. You know, it's like night no and day. Way. Yeah, they don't listen to shit out there. They're all entitled little dickheads. <laughs> so, you know, like, I'm glad I left. <laughs> Not making any friends in Toronto right now, but um, <laughs> it's all good, dude. Yeah. You know, fuck them. Um, but other than the business expanding and getting to moves and everything, did you like teach yourself anything or learn anything new whilst being uh, locked away when you were locked away? <laughs> yeah, I did so much, um, like editing and shit like that. And, oh, nice. Uh, you know, all the digital art, like when it comes to like technology, especially computer shit. I'm as technology, you know, technologically inclined as a fucking Mennonite. So, you know, the Amish could teach me a couple things. Man. Um, but digital art, I seem to fucking, you know, be able to pick that up because I do hand art like all the time. I draw shit all the time. And people are always like, can you sell me that? I'm like, just take it, dude. <laughs> like, fuck. Really? Yeah. But even my clothing line, I, everything's designed by me. So um i i learned more about digital art even more than i already knew and i was like man when it comes to like if i can make something into if i could like think about it in terms of art i can pick it up pretty quick but if not then it you might as well be speaking fucking german to me because i won't get a bit of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's fucking sick dude that's awesome yeah it's fun as shit <laughs> so 
I usually start these interviews by saying, let's take it back to where it began and whatnot, but, but there's so much with you to discuss. So I guess we'll start with the MMA career. So what was it that made you decide to train in MMA? That's a funny fucking story. Um, it was kind of a weird thing. Um, so I was in college for business accounting because I've done it as a job before as part of a job. And I knew how to do it. I just wasn't getting paid because I didn't have that piece of paper from a school saying I know my shit. So there's that loophole where like your employers don't want to pay you what you should be getting because you're not certified, but they taught you how to do it. So you know how to do the job just for peanuts, right? So I was like, fuck off. Um, (laughs) So I decided I'll go to school for the shit. And as I'm in college for it, I'm like, this is so fucking boring. Like, I'm not going to do this for the rest of my life. And I ended up signing up for the military. And wow. out here, you know, uh, we probably, because it's Canada, we probably have a division that apologizes people to death. Um, <laughs> so, you know, there, there's literally fuck all going on. So it was like a three-year wait list just to get in for the courses I qualified for. And I'm like, well, I got to do something in the meantime. And I realized like, I'm a physical person. Like, I, I'm not going to sit at a desk for the rest of my fucking life doing this shit, right? You know, uh, I'm a physical cat. So MMA became something that I was like, I've always wanted to kind of pursue it. And uh, my ex now, but at the time that I was with my son's mom that passed, uh, my son that passed, his mom, fucking, I said to her, like, how would you feel if I got into MMA and just started punching faces for a living? And she was like, you're fucking made for it, dude. So like yeah go for it and then i ended up going into a gym that was owned by um a former mma fighter and a former wwe wrestler who owned the gym and uh just never fucking left like who who owned it uh santino morella oh no fucking way that's amazing he's from the same city i was born in so um it's battle arts isn't it yep yeah. See, he knows. Yeah, there you go. I know fuck all about MMA, but I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I walked into Battle Arts one day and I fell in love immediately. And then it just took off from there and I started knocking people the fuck out. <laughs> That's incredible, dude. Did you get, did you have like fucking entrance music and shit? Yeah, dude, it was so cool because I got to do a lot of regional shit. Okay. The money was fucking good. And then um, I had already started my clothing line at that point. But the intention was the clothing line was to be a business for my son to take over when it was time. But then he was born with a terminal condition. So that was never going to happen. And then I had two choices. Do I fucking just fold this thing? Or do I take this to like some crazy levels to make him proud, man? And I was like, you can't give up on this. So I just expanded it. Now it's like fucking, um, it's so much shit right now. Um, You know, during the documentary, I fucking, you know, there's people that were working on it that, uh, their boss is a piece of shit, to be honest with you. Um, just mistreated them. They were the hardest working cats. Mm. I, saw it. I didn't like it. I bought the fucking company. 86 is ass. And now they work for me. So, you know, that's why I expanded into that. And that's why on the documentary, it'll say, you know, that my company's involved in it because I purchased the fucking shit. You know what I mean? So, Dude, um, that's cool as fuck. That's amazing. I, I don't like people being mistreated like that, that bust their ass and like they never enjoyed their job because of one person, right? And there's people that weren't getting raises in like five years that they've been there and bullshit like that. And I was like, I'll fucking work your asses off. Fuck that noise. So, you know, um, I don't just punch faces, man. I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do some nice shit once in a while. I've just I've a whole found new respect for you now as well. Like I watched your documentary and oh, shit. I found myself uh, going on the journey with you almost. I was, it was points where I was like, what the fuck am I, what was going on? There was points where I was just like, I, was, I got upset at one point, because obviously, which we'll get to. Um, and yeah, I just, I don't know. It was, it was weird. I, was, I just, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Oh, thanks, bro. I mean, I, I didn't know how to feel about it because how do you fit like, 37 at that time now i'm 38 how do you fit 37 years into 90 minutes well yeah exactly you know what i'm saying and i had to condense so much there's so much shit i couldn't talk about because of certain people out of respect out of you know um 
you know, out of avoiding lawsuits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All that good shit, right? <laughs> you know? um, and then there's people you just don't associate with anymore. So you don't have the luxury of hitting them up and just being like, hey, would you be cool if I put this out there? Uh, so it was kind of something hard to tiptoe around. Um, so I think we did the best we could, but I, I watched the editing process and everything and tried to learn so much that by the time it was done, I couldn't watch it because I fucking hated it because I've seen it so many times. Um, so honestly, when people are like, yo, is this good? I'm like, fuck, I hate it. Like, it's probably not good for my sales, but I'm like, I hate it. And they're like, why? I was like, because I watched it like three bajillion fucking times during the editing process that like, I, I can't, I'm going to have to take like a bunch of months before I can sit down and watch it and, you know, just be like, all right, it turned out okay or whatever. But, you know, I just take everyone's word for it. <laughs> yeah, dude, your story is crazy, man. Apps, like the shit you've been through to get to where you are today is inspirational. I, well, I, that. I, I hope that it comes across a certain way because like I, my whole hang up on doing it was like I don't want this to sound whiny or poor me shit I, I was like the intention for me honestly was to show people if I could go through you know start from there and end up where I'm at right now then there's no fucking reason you need to be telling yourself you can't do something man absolutely you know? so that's the intent I don't know how it comes across because like I said I fucking hate it I won't watch it <laughs> <laughs> Um, but for just, I don't want to give too much away because I want people, I want people to actually go out and get it and fucking watch it because it's unbelievable. The story is insane. But what I took from it was your grandparents were fucking heroes, absolute heroes, and a massive, massive respect for them too. Why, um, if you don't mind my ask, why did you have to go back to your dad? Um, out of spite, he fucking basically they got into an argument about the way he was treating me because he was an abusive motherfucker. And so he got pissed off at them. They got to do a huge fucking thing. He decided he was buying a house and moving out. And just, uh, he got married to someone that fucking hated me even more than he did. And so he fucking, out of spite, took me from them to live with him because he knew that they didn't want that. Um, so it was just, but yet I would be staying with them all the time while he goes to work and shit. He'd drop me off for my grandmother to watch me. Him and my grandfather worked at the same place. Okay. So... so you know, it was stupid. So it's like, okay, I'm pissed off at you and I'm doing this to spite you, but here, keep watching him anyway. You know what I'm saying? It, it is stupid as fuck. It, yeah, it makes no sense. We just trying to prove a point for no reason whatsoever. Right. He was spiteful. He's a, he is a spiteful motherfucker, though. But, you know, then doing that whole thing and, like, as we're wrapping the filming of that part, talking about my grandfather, he passed. Um, oh, shit. He was in the hospital and fucking wasn't doing so hot. And I get that news first thing in the morning and I got to fucking go straight to filming. Like I can't even process the shit. I got too many people. I can't let them down, mm. you know, hold up this whole thing. And, and, and it's just, you know, so it's like, there's that decision to make. Right. And it's like, all right, we'll deal with that later and kind of fucking carry on. So, you know, I, I think when, from what I did see, it's like, you couldn't even tell until they put it in that, uh, in writing that you know like you couldn't tell based on me that there was anything going on yeah yeah you know what i mean there's just no way to process it's just like okay we can't deal with that right now you know what i'm saying he would want me to continue this shit absolutely so you're supposed to put the camera and it's almost like you were dealing with it and you come in front of the camera it's like just you and you're like nothing yeah like nothing was ever going on um what i found mental though was where you grew up as well the amount of violence and like how absolutely batshit crazy it was and that you said that um, they would sell drugs to fund the community. Is that yeah. correct? Like, yeah. that's, that's mind-blowing. <laughs> right. Like, uh, yeah. That, <laughs> that, that, yeah. That really, you have to watch it, Jeremy. You have to watch I it. Will. I will. I do fully intend to. It's uh, Keith's story is just absolutely unreal. And that you were classed as a minority as well at school. Yeah, dude. In every class, I was one of two white people. <laughs> <laughs> And in Canada, uh, I, I'm like, what? <laughs> I just yeah. don't get it. Like the high school that I went to, the ground floor, every window had cages on the fucking windows so no one could jump in and fucking no. continue whatever beach they got in the streets, right? And fucking, you know. Yeah, dude, it, it, it was, you know, fucking bananas. Man. This, but, yeah. <laughs> just crazy, crazy ass shit, bro. I, can't, I just can't believe what I was watching. <laughs> You know, and just before my son was born, 
um, I had moved back there for uh, probably about two years. Why? <laughs> it's home to me, man. I go through, like, you know, my, my ex is pissed off because every time we walk through the street, someone will be like, big man, what's up? I'm like, what's going on, man? And they're like, she's like, you know him? I was like, no. And she's like, what the fuck? Like, you get so much respect here. I'm like, because I made it and then I came back and I help people. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I give back to the street and I fucking help people. I didn't just make it and fucking forget where I come from. I came back and I help people that don't have shit. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and it gets you fucking crazy respect, man, because most people deny where they come from. And I'm, I fucking, I love it. You know, like I embrace that shit. That's home to me. Uh, you know, I know to outsiders fucking, they don't even want to pass through, but to me, I never had a fucking problem. Nobody's ever fucking me. So, you know, maybe I, yeah. I have memories of it, but you know, yeah. it, it's home to me, man. It, you know, everything about it. I just, but now I've moved to another province completely, so I don't even fucking live anywhere near there anymore. <laughs> you know, I can't say I blame you. No, no, no. They, so changed, uh, they changed too much of it, like the stuff that made it what it was. You know, for big corporate shit, all the mom and pop places that we loved, fucking yeah, they tore them out to put like big businesses in, and that fucking killed it for me. So, oh. so how did the documentary actually come about? Was this something you decided to do, or did someone approach you? I was approached and I was kind of hounded for the better part of two years uh, to do it. And I was like, I don't fucking want to do that bullshit. Like, I was like, who gives a fuck? You know what I, mean? like, honestly, um, I, I didn't know because my life is so fucked up. I, the first thought was, it's just going to bring people down. It's going to bump people the fuck out. And I don't see a point to that. And then I thought, you know, um, it's going to be tough to go about it without, you, there's always going to be somebody that thinks you're going about it with a poor me, you know, you're all the, you so successful and whatever. So why even fucking talk about this shit or whatever. But then someone's like, you owe it to yourself to kind of get that shit out. But, you know, I took it as like, I owe it to the people that supported me to show them like you could fucking overcome anything, dude, that you can't control the cards you're dealt, but how you play that fucking hand is all you. You know what I'm saying? You can fold mm -hmm. that shit and give up on yourself. No problem. That's the easy thing. Or, you know, you could just fucking be smart about it and, and do what you got to do and play that shit to the best of your ability and see what happens, right? So, you know, I, I figured I, I needed to give back. And, uh, you know, it's a trip. I was talking to somebody the other night and uh, something that I had on my show. And she's like, dude, you blew my mind. She's like, I, I just got goosebumps when you told me this shit that you found yourself being asked to be a motivational speaker and whatever. And I, I did that shit, but standing in the gym of the very schools that I used to fucking sit outside of at 3 AM, trying to get out of the wind when I left home at 15, because I had nowhere to live. So the very fucking places that I used to like kind of go in the doorways and chill for a bit. I, you know, when I had nothing, literally no shelter, no food, no fucking nothing. I'm now standing in that gym of that same school, fucking telling every motherfucker in there that, you know, you can do whatever the fuck you want because I, I sure as hell did. And there was a time I was outside that door that y'all go out every day at 3 a.m. fucking hoping to just kind of get out of the cold. You know what I'm saying? It's so Crazy. weird. The trip. It's just insane. But I, I get where you were coming from, though, because for other people hearing it, you're like, fuck, that's, one, that's a story that needs to be told. But it's you, they're like, that's just my life, whatever. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know? I get but, it yeah and then i thought about it that way as well and i kind of thought you have no fucking idea how many people are dealing with that right now that may need mm. to hear this. you know what i'm saying that may fucking need to hear this that may um be dealing with pretty much the same thing like obviously there's going to be differences but for the most part you know could be in the same shitty situation that really needs somebody to kind of give them that kick up the ass and be like, yo, let's do this. Get off your ass and let's go, you know, fix it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. yeah. A, a fair play to that woman as well that gave you that coffee in that petrol station. Damn. Petrol station man. was incredible. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's funny. We talked about that on my show too, uh, where it was like, like I said, a $7 gesture, basically, you know what I'm saying? That yeah. I never forgot 20 plus years later. So now I got my rule of seven. Uh, yeah, you, know, you do. 
when I fucking became successful, I would start, you know, giving Christmas gifts to less fortunate kids, seven kids, minimum, seven families, seven gifts apiece. And, uh, you know, the, the, the woman that was on, the actress that was on my show said the coolest thing where she's like, you know, when you stood in that gym that you used to be outside of the school, when you stood in that gym talking to them kids, man, you may very well have been there, you know, number seven without even realizing it. You know what I'm saying? And um, somebody turned me on to this concept of like angel numbers or some shit, which is trippy. And um, <laughs> so I looked into it. And apparently, like, you will have a designated angel number that coincides with your birth minus triple seven. No fucking way. How weird is that? Based on my birth date, day, month, year, seven, seven, seven. I was like, that's fucking nuts, dude. That blew my mind. That is. Not... <laughs> what? Right? You know? Um, trip me out, man. Because uh, there's a message that comes with every one of those numbers so they say if you see like three 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 on your clock or anywhere or five 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 it's always something you know kind of a message being relayed to you you just got to acknowledge it and look into it and sometimes it's just telling you you're on the right track man keep doing what you're doing and whatever um but with your birth uh number it kind of lets you know what you're like based on your situation and whatever and when i gave the description that actress was like damn she's like that's everything i see and you just fucking determined you know, uh, it's just a whole list of things. And she's like, this is spot on, dude. And I was like, that's nuts. That's insane. That's blown my mind. So I, fuck me, dude. <laughs> so imagine when I saw it, because I'm like, what are the odds, right? Well, yeah, exactly. Is it all the, the, always the same numbers, all three of them? Uh, no. Oh, so they can vary as well. well yeah. that's, that's even more fucking mental then. That, yeah. I'm, do I'm done. That's, I'm, that's the <laughs> you could have like three, five, one or something. You know what I'm saying? Like it could be anything. It doesn't have to be. So that's why I thought if there was one seven in it, it would trip me out. But when it's all three, that's <laughs> nuts. Fucking nuts. So how did the making of the documentary go? It must have been quite emotional to talk about all this sort of stuff. Damn. Uh, yeah, there's some bad times, man. I like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I got to a point, dude. I flipped a fucking table. Like, I was like, I'm not doing this shit anymore. I was so pissed. I was fucking like, just done with it. Um, you know, it was just, it was a lot of shit, man. And it was nobody's fault. It was just like, um, you know, it's like, fuck, it, it's hard to explain. I mean, you get tired of like saying the same shit, talking about the same thing. And I was like, I'm not doing this whole rehearsing bullshit. It's just going to come out the way it comes out. Yeah. But then, you know, there'll be times where, like, something happens and, like, footage gets fucking deleted. And it's like, are you kidding me? Now you got to do this again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You just found out your grandfather's pretty much on his last legs and you got to fucking talk about this shit over again because yesterday somebody deleted it accidentally. Shit happens, right? You know? Yeah. And I know it's going to go through the same shit with movie making. There's going to be times where the shit gets deleted accidentally or whatever. Um some dickhead's going to keep the lens cap on while filming or whatever the fuck. <laughs> um, try not to choke no one. But, uh, you know, that was like one of the worst times where it was just a stressful night. And I was, you know, it was probably like three in the morning. I was just fucking done with everything. And I just flipped the fucking table. Like, I'm done with this shit. You know, I don't want to do this anymore. And, you know, then it's kind of like, you know, you kind of have to. Like, at this point, you can't fucking, like me telling myself, you can't scrap this now. you come too far. It's almost done. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So just had to get that out of my system and just kind of, you know. Was there a lot of things that came to light that you hadn't either dealt, like talked about very much or like dealt with in any way? Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I, yeah. I, you know, I think there's a lot of shit people were finding out for the first time. Um, because I, you know, I don't bore people with my fucking problems and shit. <laughs> it's, you're, not, you're, not, you're not boring anybody though. It's, you know, it's always good to talk to people. And when there were points when you were mentioning like how you felt, always felt alone. So I was like, I'll be your friend, Keith. I'll be your fucking friend. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really generally like, that's just, it was just pissing me off. Like how people were being so like, yeah, I don't give a shit. But I was just that, I, I don't know. That's why I say about the wave of emotions I was going through. It's just like, I would be fuck if I was there. I would be fucking there for you, no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's what got me through all this like quarantine bullshit. It was like I don't fuck with people anyway, man. So <laughs> it, was, it was when they closed the gyms that I got upset. Then I'm like, oh, now you're pissing me off. 
Yeah. <laughs> I didn't notice anything was wrong until they said the gyms were closed. I'm like, oh, don't do that to me now. <laughs> like, like, God, Motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had much feedback on the documentary? I have, dude. It's been really cool. I mean, people have been really kind. I've fucking had to sign so many of these damn things. It's sorry, sorry. No, no, it's all good. <laughs> hey, man, it's a good problem to have. Um, you know, uh, but yeah, people fucking were like, dude, that was heavy. And I was like, man, I didn't want to bring people down like that. And they're like, no, no, it's not that it was depressing necessarily. Yeah, it had its moments, but they're like, it, it just fucking made me feel like I need to get off my ass and do something. <laughs> you know, and I was like, well, that's cool, man um that was kind of the whole awesome like so, as tom's already said he watched i do plan to watch it as soon as i can but when i was messaging tom last night he said the only thing bad about it is the fact that alex white is in it <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean at the end of the day you know nobody's come up to me and been like this sucks and punched me in the neck so I'm, it must be okay so, you I mean, have no seen one's... yourself right no one would want to punch you in the neck <laughs> They'll do that thing where they like hide behind somebody and be like, yeah, it was it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> or or I don't know, they just or, or run away. <laughs> nah. It really was it was. I I, lo- I loved every second of it. And obviously, of course, it was all for Madden, of course. Um yeah. this is where all this has begun. So dude, that destroyed me. <laughs> oh my god, it was brutal. I I, don't, I can't even begin to imagine obviously what you've been through with it all and that obviously currently right now as well. But that's, uh, yeah, like Jamie's a dad as well. Like, you know, it's yeah. just. I'll, I'll admit that's part of why I put off watching it because I don't know if I could sit through that. <laughs> you know, what's really funny about that, honestly, is uh, my show's producer, every fucking time she sees that shit, because she was part of the editing process as well, because she wanted to figure out how to do this shit. Um, and she's like, every fucking time, she just. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I laugh at her honestly, and she's just like, shut up every fucking time. It's like, don't do this to me. I'm not watching this shit. <laughs> but uh, I mean, man. was it true? Like, I don't know. If you don't want to talk about it, it's cool, but we'll Oh no, I'm a man. Open okay. book. Was it true that you found out through a fan? Yes. He, like Wait, what? Yeah, dude, I woke up from a fucking nap. For it to, you know, a, a message on social media from a fan, like, because I had a message request. And it was a fan saying, I'm so fucking sorry for your loss or whatever. And then I reached out and found out it was true. Um, what? Yeah. So the next day I went to the gym because, like, that's my therapy. And then you have fucking strangers coming up to you, fucking offering their condolences. You're like, who the fuck? You know, like, how do people, like, everything I do is public. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it became like too much. Um, so being fucking known all over the world just kind of blows in that sense. And I hate to sound ungrateful, but that was one of those times where I hated it. Um, you know, so yeah, yeah, that to me was like, you know, and it's nothing against the people that it was kind of them to fucking do that. It was just a shitty way to find out, you know. Um, Again, but, can't begin to imagine. But how did they find out before you did it was someone from the UK as well. <laughs> really? Yes. Vast, wherever you are, I'll fucking find you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, I don't know how the fuck, like, people just know shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like everything that involves me, there's things people probably fucking know. I don't even know. <laughs> so, I mean, I learn new shit about myself every fucking day from people that think they know something about me. It's fucking hilarious. So, you know, um, I don't know, man. It's just one of those weird things. And it's just like, yep, it's true. And, you know, I guess his mom is just dealing with shit so much that, like, fucking couldn't even be bothered to, like, you know, hit me up and just be like, yeah, you know. Um, Fuck. So, you know, probably still processing it, I think. Um, So, you know, and her and I haven't spoken since. Like, we kind of emailed, I emailed her uh, the, the day of. Mm. and it was a pleasant exchange and that was kind of it and it's like we just don't there's no beef no drama i'll always love her to death it's just i think there's just too many reminders there yeah that i don't think we could you know i I don't want to bother her so i I just don't think she could handle it and so i just never i backed the fuck off 
and it's been a couple of years now we haven't said a word to each other there's no fucking hatred animosity or anything it's just i don't want to stir her shit up you know what i mean so yeah. i just back the fuck off she i think is pretty much understood if she ever needs anything consider it done but um yeah it's just kind of you know give her space kind of deal and so you know it is what it is yeah i'm sorry dude it's just <sighs> Yeah, I appreciate what can, that. what can you say? But what yeah. can you say? Like it's you know, just you know? mental, absolutely mental. And I'm just sorry that you're having to go through that and having to deal with that sort of shit. You know, I appreciate that. At the end of the day, though, I'm so fucking proud of him because when he was born, they gave him two weeks to live. And nine days after he turned two years old, he decided his flight was over on his terms. So that's badass that's as that, fuck. That's yeah. Little champ, little fucking champ. So that's what I did. Bad. I realized I, I still have the actual first shirt that my company ever made. And I put it in a big poster frame with his picture and a story about how it started for him because of him. And so now it's on my wall. The fucking thing is from 2016 and it still looks like pristine. So Amazing. That's yeah, it's pretty nuts. That's fucking cool, man. Yeah, dude. It, it, you know, I was pretty happy with that because I'm like, damn. It's how many years old now? It still holds up, still in great condition. So, you know, I guess that's why people buy my shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love that you do it all for him, man. It's absolutely incredible you do it in his memory and his name. It's just amazing. So, I read that uh, you got you were a tattoo artist for a bit. Yeah. Yep. What made you get into that, man? What made you think, you know what? Fuck it, I'm gonna do a bit of tattooing for a little bit. Uh, I was always a big art freak. Um, I love art. So to me, I, I would think at that point, I was kind of in the process of a career change. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah. I just knew I wanted to enjoy what I was doing. And I decided because I have so much ink, that, yeah. um, you know, why not, right? And uh, so the person that did my sleeve actually taught me. Um, and I almost immediately hated it. <laughs> why? because much like becoming successful when you become a tattoo artist you suddenly have like 90 some best fucking friends you didn't know you had uh, and uh, yeah. cousins that suddenly want to fucking be close to you that didn't give you the time of fucking day the whole time you were existing <laughs> you know like yeah you know it, it, you, and now all of a sudden everyone wants something for nothing and it just sucked the life out of it for me and i was like i love art too much to let someone make me not enjoy it anymore Mm -hmm. I don't want to hate it. So I just said, fuck it. I'm not doing this anymore. And I found a more violent therapy. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what sort of art would you like doing then? I take, is it more like graffiti based like you've got for your company or? I do everything. Actually. I do graffiti, um, a lot of comic book art because I'm really, that. yeah. Um, and, uh, I do portraits on occasion and, um pretty much everything in between i'll do a lot of horror art like stuff from horror movies and shit yeah i love it um i'm a big like nightmare on elm street freak um so stuff like that you know uh i did this myself um it's fucking cool man i love it i love it. it's it's really like retro as well Thanks, dude, that's what I want, like... you know yeah. <laughs> i love retro shit dude uh nostalgia is a big thing for me um it's amazing I'll smoke weed and watch the 80s Ninja Turtle cartoons. Like, I'm a grown <laughs> fucking man, dude, and I still do this shit. They should have never gave me money, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you're, you're making the best out of it, though. So, you know. Yeah, I, I can't complain, man. I eat, like, two steaks a day every day, fucking, and chicken and whatever the fuck else I want. And, you know, like, I don't go hungry and shit. I can't complain. But I also have a charity now um, beyond... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I started a charity for Madden's um, condition that he had to, you know, it's too late for him, but there's a lot of children out there that just don't need to fucking die. So I run a charity now that, uh, you know, besides like what I do for kids, like this kind of goes with that. And um, so it's the Madden Taylor Foundation. So it uh, will donate for research for NKH to try to end that shit. And it also helps with like the, um, you know, gifts and stuff for kids or whatever people need. If, if there's someone out there that's starving, not anymore. 
you know what I'm saying? We take care of pretty much everything and try to cover all that. So try to help everybody, man. You're a hero. You're a fucking hero, dude. I, I'm you finding are. out so much more about you that I'm just like, fuck me. Can I love this guy any more than I already do? <laughs> can you uh, send me the details after this, please? So I can donate. Yeah, yeah absolutely, man. Um, it's still going through the process, like officially with the government bullshit because it's so, it's such a process to get like the charity status and everything. Okay. But, um, you know, that, that process I'm doing just so people have that peace of mind of knowing this is a legitimate, like, organization. It's not funding my pockets. I think people seen enough of, like, you know, the shit. I'm published in so many fucking magazines and shit. I think people know by now. Uh, I've done enough radio shows and shit. I think people know by now that I do a lot of charitable shit. And I don't say that to get recognition. I just let people know if they need help, man. Um don't be fucking ashamed to ask because I hate that. That's so stupid to me. Uh, everybody needs help once in a while, man. So, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and I know that's hypocritical of me because at 15, like, I didn't want to take no help. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, people are probably like, shut the fuck up. Take your own advice, dickhead. You know? <laughs> now that I'm in a position, I don't need it, you know? <laughs> that's the thing. Um, people that are in your situation, they could go one or two ways. They could have gone fuck everyone, fuck the world, I hate everything, bleh. Or they've gone, you could go the way you've gone, which is, I hated this, I don't ever want to see anyone like this, can I help? Can I just let me do things to help? And it's, you're a fucking wonderful human being, man. Oh, dude, I appreciate that, but honestly, I credit that old lady that fucking with that $7 gesture because that stuck with me because I was a pissed off 15-year-old that believed all the shit that I was brainwashed to believe that nobody gives a fuck about you. And in that moment, I was just like, maybe the world ain't so bad. Does that person don't know me for shit? Like, I could have been some punk bastard that's, you know, out there at fucking 5 a.m. for a reason. And she didn't look at me and assume the worst. She fucking saw a kid that needed some help and just gave something so generous, you know, and it blew my mind to the point that like 20 plus years later when I was in a position to give back, like I never forgot it. You know what I mean? It, it just meant so fucking much. And I think the older you get, the more mature you get and you see things differently, you realize just what a big deal that really was. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the fact that, you know, it hit me where it's like, if you still remember that 20 plus years later and it still means that much to you, then people ain't going to forget when you help them the way you have, you know, like it does matter, you know, so that's important to do it. And, you know, so I, I give her that credit, really. Have you ever found her? No, man, we never seen each other again, ever. Like, that's that was just a passing thing. That's so crazy. Yeah, It's almost man. like it was meant to be sort of thing, in a way. Mm. Yeah, yeah, because it, it was just weird timing. And, you know, they, they pulled up in an RV to gas up. And she saw me looking at magazines, kind of thinking that I was getting warm for a minute. And, uh, like, what, 15-year-olds out at, like, 5 a.m. at a fucking well. convenience store. You know what I'm saying? In a 7 Eleven, for fuck's sake. Well, most people don't go there by choice. Like, <laughs> what's this motherfucker doing hanging out there? Like, you know, something obviously ain't right. And I think put two and two together. So, you know, a $2 coffee, a $5 bill, and just said, take care of yourself and left before I could even say, nah, thanks, but no thanks. You know, it, it just stuck with me. I was like, damn, you know, that's crazy. Well, so. I just wanted to give back because someone did that for me and I felt it was so important, you know, but I'd never wanted to do it one time and then quit, you know? And, and the coolest thing is like the first year I started doing the gifts thing uh, for Christmas, the one family that I had uh, helped out the next year I saw on social media in a group, they were looking for people that they could help the next Christmas after. No uh, way. They, yeah. They never, to their credit, they never hit me up to tell me about it, to get credit or recognition or anything. They just went about it on their own and uh i saw it and i was like oh that's that's so cool that's you know awesome. so i mean that in itself something i did for somebody gave back to so many people because it made them give to someone else so it kind of snowball effect and that was really cool to see beautiful absolutely it's amazing. beautiful it's amazing so, so again it goes back to that woman then she gets the credit really it's uh, absolute hero wherever you are whoever you are so I did just want to quickly briefly touch back on your MMA career because as soon I wanted, I read you were 32 and 0. Yeah. Never lost a single fight in your whole career. 
Never. That's insane. And that's why we don't fuck with it, Jamie. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> that's just... I, uh... And you're only I, fighting for a year, is that right? Yeah. Well, yeah, a bit. And then my son, you know, yeah. his condition kind of got out of hand. And then it was like, okay, this has to back burner for a while. Would you ever go back to it? Yeah, that's a big question, right? Um, I don't know. Like, I, I do feel like I have unfinished business. Um, but at the same time, I've got all this other shit going on now. And with concussions and there's people that are so concerned about it that they're like, dude, you got in, got out, you got paid, you didn't fucking end up rattled uh, with concussions and bullshit like that. Why push your luck? You know? Um, Very true. Because of long term, right? So I feel like I got more in me, sure. But at the same time, I, I feel like I've decided on, I haven't ruled it out, but I feel like there's certain fights that I would jump on immediately. And then there's certain fights that I'd just be like, eh. you know, maybe I'm done, but there's a couple that I would not be able to turn down. So, is one Tom Bruno? <laughs> I would not pass that up. <laughs> Amazing. That's all I wanted to hear. No, I'm joking. Um, but, dude. Let's get on to Tatnis. Let's get on to the podcast. You have had some insane guests on that on that show. Unbelievable. Like for Joseph Kelly from Training Day, you've had Mick Strawn, obviously, who you happy you uh, lovingly gifted to us for a live show last year. Um, and obviously Andrew Joseph from Breaking Bad. It's like, what's it like to talk to so many people from so many different walks of life? I got a lot of friends, dude. It's really weird. Um, you know what I mean? Being a 15-year-old kid that nobody wanted to having all these fucking friends like um i've had yon birch from people under the stairs he's a good friend of mine he hit me up on my birthday which was super cool amazing uh, he's coming back on the show um cj graham who played jason in friday the 13th part six had to reschedule because he accidentally got double booked he's a friend of mine so i don't care i, I ain't gonna yell at his wife she's the one that did it um <laughs> uh, so you know because for halloween he was supposed to come on like uh during october yeah and uh, she accidentally double booked him. So he was in Vegas doing a Comic-Con kind of thing. So I was like, ah, fuck. All right, whatever. Uh, it is what it is. I mean, shit happens. It's my friend. I'll get him on. Fucking doesn't matter. Um, you know, fuck, man. I had Johnny Brennan from the Jerky Boys and Family Guy on, which was dope. Yeah, that's fucking um, sick. Yeah, man. I, fuck, it's crazy. I, I forget half the people that have been on my shit. And then I go back. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, fucking... Kenny Olson, friend of mine from, uh, you know, he was a guitarist for Kid Rock. Fucking, yeah. we talked for like two hours, I think, about, you know, him playing at Woodstock 99, shit like that. And uh, yeah, man, I got a lot of fucking friends and it's really funny. Um, that, uh, it's been nuts. It's been fucking crazy. You know, Dag Fares from Rob Zombie's Halloween remake. Yeah, I was just going to uh, mention that one. Yeah, it was a good fucking show too. I liked talking to him because he's a friend of mine. He's just a chill dude man um so there's so many like i couldn't pick a favorite but and then i get lesser known people to give them some fucking exposure and, and an opportunity you know a platform so you know it's cool to talk to your friends all the fucking time but it's like they've already done cool shit like give somebody a chance to get some exposure you know yeah. Uh, so yeah you know it's been a fun fucking time and I'm so sporadic with my show now because I can be. I just do whatever the fuck I want. Um, <laughs> honestly, I'll, I'll go like two weeks without even doing shit just because I'm like, fuck this. I got shit to do. Um, you know, doing movies and everything else now and, uh, you know, uh, the Roku channel coming. Yeah. Um, it's fucking bananas, dude. It's so much to keep up with and people get it. You know, but I don't believe in overexposure neither. I think too much of anything turns people off. So don't want to do that to people. Yeah. So what made you want to start the podcast? Again, I think people just telling me I should. They're like, you're an opinionated cunt. You got to fucking shit about <laughs> everything. And I'm like, that is very true. Um, you know, uh, but I'm not sure that, you know, I really feel like doing it. Uh, you know, I'm not sure anyone give a shit. Uh, because at that point, I was out of MMA for like a while. And I thought, you know, with people 
you, you become irrelevant pretty quick. So I thought no one's going to fucking care. They're going to move on, find somebody else and not really be like, Oh, I wonder what he's doing now. But I was fucking wrong, man. Millions of fucking downloads and shit and like listeners all over the fucking world. And uh, all these crazy opportunities going on other people's shows. Um, fuck man the countries that are supporting my shit like hardcore is fucking bananas so you know i was like i guess i was wrong so then i stuck it out and i kept doing it um but yeah that's pretty much it somebody was like you're an opinionated cunt why don't you fucking rant about shit i'm like all right (laughs) (laughs) was interviewing people always the format you wanted to do for the show was that just happened yeah, it just happened, I think, after the first year or so when I realized how many people actually gave a shit when I did, like, an Ask Me Anything show and I realized how many people were literally affected by it and, like, blew my mind. And even had somebody say that, you know, you said some shit that saved my life. I'm like, what the fuck? So then I was like, i got to start taking this really seriously and kind of using it as a platform to say what needs to be said but also maybe you know at first i didn't want to bring my friends and shit on because people would be like oh name dropping and blah 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 and uh you know but then i was like you know what fuck it man who gives a shit if that's how people take it so be it but there's some people that would love to fucking hear from these guests so that's when i got cool with it you know where does the name tapness come from actually uh that's funny um so basically when i was a tattoo artist there was a guy a client who came in and I guess didn't want to admit that he couldn't for the life of him remember my, what my fucking name was. <laughs> so he gave me that nickname because I'm a tattoo artist who happens to be kind of covered. Um, and it stuck because that's what every fucking client knew me as by that point. And then everyone else fucking uh, eventually I didn't have a fucking real name anymore. So <laughs> I was like, you might as well brand yourself, right? If it sticks with people that quickly you know brand yourself yeah. uh, so that way even when you lose touch with those people it's like they'll see that shit and be like holy fuck he's doing some shit you know so that that's pretty much it's it's a pretty underwhelming fucking story but not really it's not really. pretty cool man yeah not, not really shattering but <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're not exactly curing cancer with this shit but uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> Uh, so obviously, obviously, you've set up Tatnus Company as a, as a company now. What's what's the plans, the idea behind it? If you've got the clothing line, the podcast, you've meant up to the documentary. Is what other stuff is, is you aiming to do with this? That's funny um, because I fucking need to ask myself the same damn thing because <laughs> when I started out, literally, I was in a shithole basement apartment in Ontario, and it started out as a very small clothing line, and now. There's the fucking production company, the film studios, the fucking, the show, the clothing line, uh, supplements coming out for people that work out. Um, just whatever. It's it's now like a fucking entire umbrella rather than a clothing line. It's it's everything. It houses everything. Uh, the Roku channel is going to provide spots for all different talent, which will be paid based on subscriptions. They'll get a cut of the subscription money. Uh, I don't expect anybody to fucking work for free. If they want exposure, that's great, but they're also going to get a piece of the subscription money too. So that way they're motivated to bring in more subscribers because the more fucking subscribers, the more money they get. So then it's not just me promoting it. It's them chasing more money. Right. So, yeah. So there's no limits to it at this point. I think it's just going to become whatever it takes on. I'm just letting it kind of do its thing organically because I chase a lot of different shit. Like I, whatever I catch an interest in, I'm like, I'm doing that now. And, you know, and it's not instead of other shit. It's like on top of other shit. So, you know, one day I'll sleep. Well, you hope. <laughs> you know. Oh, oil. I'll take that as well. <laughs> I'm not. Hey, Iraq looks like it hasn't done nothing in a while. Maybe I'll go buy that. <laughs> Invest in sand. You know, <laughs> I'll make hourglasses. Beaches are now mine. <laughs> right? Why not? Come to the Tatnus Beach. <laughs> right. That'd be sick, dude. That would actually. It's, it's nude, nude only. <laughs> right? It was funny. My personal assistant, when I I came out of the gym one time, and I was like fucking full of blood and whatever, 
you know, your, your body pumps full of blood and shit. Yeah. And I was like, you know what I'm going to invest in this time with the company? She's like, what, gamma rays? <laughs> <laughs> like, God damn. Nice. That was quick as well. Nice. That is quick. <laughs> <laughs> so did the clothing line come first then before anything else? Yeah. That's absolutely amazing. I loved the uh, the straight out of tatness hoodie that you're wearing in the documentary. I was like, I need to fucking get me one of those bad boys. Oh, thanks, dude. Uh, people have been buying them like fucking mad, dude. Um, and so someone just, uh, actually an actress just bought the documentary in like two hoodies uh, the other day. Really? Which, yeah, like all in one. And I was like, shit, man. Like you were just on my show and that's how I caught it. You know, and I was like, damn. That's sick. My shit runs itself at this point where it's just like, you know, I get fucking shit selling while I do this. <laughs> so it's cool. But every once in a while, I'll see the, the addresses and the names and it's like, oh, oh, well, that's cool. That's awesome. Save that for the address book. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you working on at the moment? Uh, basically the Roku channel and a movie and my show and my business <laughs> <laughs> okay mate i'll change it is it what aren't you working on at the moment <laughs> sleep and free time <laughs> basically yeah yeah, yeah. Um, sleep, you know is kind of one of those things one day i'll pursue that um, that sounds cool <laughs> yeah you know why not um maybe give my cats a little attention and uh, <laughs> How, how did you uh, get into the movies, man? What, what, how did that all come about? Damn, I, I did a show where they were like, look at the fucking size of you, motherfucker. Like, how big are you? And I said, six foot five, 265 oh. of muscle and, you know, size 14 shoes. And they're like, how the fuck are you not the next Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers? I'm like, because nobody asked. And they were like, <laughs> we got to fix that. Like, would you be interested in doing fucking movies and shit? I was like, fuck yeah. So then it was just like, you know, and then, you know, I, I, I started doing business with other people. I stopped doing business with them because fuck them and uh, <laughs> started doing my own shit. And I got opportunities and I'm like, damn, you know, I was like, okay, I'll pursue this. So that's cool. So it just kind of took off, you know, I just kind of decided, yeah, I'll fucking try my hand at that. And uh, I was given some pretty cool advice from a friend, uh, Method Man. Um, who had said, uh, don't make this mistake. Do not fucking smoke weed while filming. <laughs> because he's like, this is what happened to me on set of How High. I got so fucking high that I couldn't do this shit because the whole idea to me was ridiculous. Grown ass men pretending to be somebody else and, <laughs> and act out this shit. He's like, it just seems so nonsensical. I couldn't fucking do it. <laughs> so there's a whole waste of a shoot. <laughs> I was like, that'd be so me. I'd be at the catering table watching Ninja Turtles and just fucking. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Nothing would get done. Oh, it's just incredible. Just what a. Oh, would, you know, considering the story and the life you've had, which we mentioned in the documentary, we've barely touched any of it. And it's still what we have talked about is fucking an incredible story. It's, oh, it's mind blowing. It's See, a fact. Just the fact you just randomly drop, oh yeah, my friend Method Man. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's incredible. It's weird to me because it's like to me, this is normal life. Like it's you know, I'm going on five years of this shit, like six years, whatever. Um Yeah. I don't, you know, it, it, but yeah, you know, people constantly tell me you need to look back at where you come from and whatever. And I was like, I don't forget where I come from. It's just I'm so forward focused that I don't really look back at shit. So people get mad at me. They're like, you should be proud of what you've done. I'm like, I don't have time for that shit. I got things to do. Uh, I don't look back at what I've done. It's like, I'm focused on what's next. But when I do like think for a second that, you know, there was a time that you had nothing, I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, did you ever think that life would turn out this way? Did you ever think you'd become as successful as you are? No, I didn't. I, couldn't have predicted that i mean if you were to tell me that shit back in the day i would have been like yeah okay buddy you know <laughs> more um you know like there's no fucking way but you know then my son just kind of motivated me where i was like okay 
I gotta fucking do something huge. Mm. Um, and you know, um, it, it just became a whole thing. Uh, so, and you know, to know as many people as I do and shit like that, it's just fucking nuts. Um, hey, did you fucking know, by the way, Mike Tyson's never tasted coffee in his life? What? What? What a random factoid. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, we had that conversation. It was really weird, but um, so yeah, I don't get that. I'm a coffee guy, and yeah, so how the shit? I was like, how the fuck do you not? It's like I just have no interest. Okay, so that's weird. Uh, that weirded me out. I was like, I don't want to talk to you no more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he drinks tea. Now imagine having the balls to be like, oh, I drink tea for men. It's called coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't get I, it. I can't say anything there because I can't stand coffee. <laughs> God damn. But at least you've had it to say that you fucking... Yeah, I've tried it. Yeah, I've tried See? it. He's never had it. Never tried it. No interest. That's crazy. Not That's a crazy. bit of curiosity, nothing. How the fuck does he wake up? How does he, like, start the day? <laughs> if I know, man, like, I don't, I don't know how you manage that. I'm a caffeine freak. Same. I love my caffeine. You know? Good man. That's not... Uh, Tom, have you got anything else you wanted to ask before we start bringing this to a close? Um, no, I'm all good, man. I just, I th- Keith, thank you so fucking much for doing this, man. We, I'm so sorry I've messed you around like oh, no, four dude. times. Hey, man, like I said, you know, I, I may not have to do the nine to five thing, but I haven't forgotten what it's like. And if, you know, especially with everything going on, man, if you got to fucking make adjustments to make your money, fucking do it. I ain't going nowhere. So, you know, I don't want to interfere, sure. take food off anyone's fucking table, man. No, I appreciate it, man. Thank Massive you. I, appreciate. I was just like shitting it. <laughs> I don't want to message him again. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I, I'm the most understanding motherfucker in spite of what some people may think. I, I'm pretty chill. Yeah. Uh, I've seen him. He could flick his phone and it hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> no, yep. th- thank you, Keith, man. Really appreciate it. Oh, Keith. thank you guys, man. It's been a blast. Now, before we get out of it, we do like to play a little game with our guests if, you, if you're thank up you. for this. It's literally, we call it a quick fire round. It's six questions and you just answer them as quick as you can. We have a good laugh for this. So, number number one, your favourite Muppet. Oh, shit, Animal. Oh, God. Oh, shout. First ever concert you went to. Finger Eleven. Nice. Oh, another good band. Didn't they do the Kane theme music at one point? Yeah, they did, yeah. Yes, they did. Oh. <laughs> it was free, too, actually, the concert I went to. Really? Nice. Yes. Yeah. Fucking win. Your favorite Power Ranger? Oh, I don't watch that shit, but if I have to pick, <laughs> I mean, that's my producer, man. My producer turtle. loves that shit. <laughs> favorite turtle, turtle. Favorite turtle, then we'll change it. Oh man, Raft and then Mikey. It's like a, they're tied for like. But... Really? <laughs> yeah. Raft rarely comes up. I feel. See, for me, I always, as a kid, I always like fucking. I identify with the two. I related where I, I had a temper, but I also loved to have fun. Yeah. So it's like I'll party and then punch you in the fucking mouth. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I can relate to both and I love them. Amazing. Your dream guest for your podcast. Oh god damn. Uh Robert England. Yeah. That's I could see why. Show. Yeah. Is is a good one to be quite apropos for this episode. Oh, good word. Any advice you would give to little Keith? Um you'll be fine. Don't fucking Quit on yourself and don't wait so goddamn long. <laughs> <laughs> and the final one, and this all, all all depends if we even release this episode of a podcast. Does pineapple belong on a pizza? I already know that you're gonna hate this answer because I've I've watched this before. But yeah, dude. <laughs> I mean, sorry, oh, but I... <laughs> I, I knew it. I literally just before coming on, I watched. Um, <laughs> the show with Rachel and I was like damn they just fucking did her dirty when she answered <laughs> and I was like they're gonna fucking hate me when they, if they ask me this shit what's funny is I haven't asked that question for ages I thought you know I'll throw that one on it's been a while <laughs> I just happened to watch it just literally ended like minutes before I was coming on and uh, they asked that I was like they asked that question oh my god thank you for watching that by the way man yeah, thank you massive. Oh, thank dude. you yeah, it was fucking fun, man. Um, and as soon as that question came up, I was like, oh, they're going to fucking have beef with me. 
but you oh. know that we that we know we actually wouldn't have beef with you, Keith, because we love and respect you dearly, and uh, yeah, and we're, we're too scared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to skirt around that. <laughs> Keith, have you got anything you want to plug? Any websites, social media, or all that jazz? Oh my god, I hate doing that. I, <laughs> I don't like turning people's shows into a commercial. No, that's what you're here for, man. Just plug. It's, I can Google Tatness. I'm fucking everywhere. I mean, I yeah. just <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know, that's fucking it. Um, I'm not hard to find. Uh, I get people adding me on social media all the time, which is funny because I have like a profile that I'll allow fans and shit to add me on and then there's my personal and people always try to fucking add my personal bastards <laughs> so I have to keep my friends list private because of the people that are on it because I don't want them being harassed because it's like Ken Sagos from Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and 4 is a good friend of mine he's on my shit he was on my show um so fucking you know there's always there's already that weird thing with my producer who was around when he called me and I always have my phone on speaker. And, um, you know, even though I know him, he's, he's just that etiquette of his, like, hey, this is Ken Sago. So I'm like, I know who the fuck you are, Ken. Um, <laughs> but her face, what? <laughs> and, and as I'm, I'm like, oh, what's up, brother? Uh, he was literally coming on the show that day. She's like fangirl on the fuck out silently because I'm on the phone. And then when I get up, she's like, did fucking Kim Cade from Nightmare on Elm Street seriously just call your fucking phone? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, it's my boy. And like, And then I realized, okay, this is not normal for most people, motherfucker. That's... <laughs> you're gonna get that reaction. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's funny. But, like, I don't want people harassing them because they see them on my list. So I keep my fucking list private. Um, so that way... Because that's, that's a dick move. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm messaging yeah. you because I saw you on his fucking presence. Then I look like a dick. So, no, I get that, dude. And okay. everyone, go and go out and buy the Tatnus DVD, the other side of hell documentary. Go and fucking buy it. Trust me, <laughs> you will not be disappointed, that. motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> you have a way with words, don't you? I try. You do try. Keith, this I'm... has been amazing, my friend. Oh, I had a blast, bro. Thank you so much. An absolute Both blast. Keith, man, thank you so much for doing this, man. I appreciate finally getting around to it. I've loved every second of it. And um, have anytime. a great day, man. You too, brother. Anytime, both y'all. Appreciate it. Take it easy. Cheers, my friend. See you, bro. See you later, man. See you later. Bye.